But today being a youth takeover, uh, you're going to get to hear from our incredible youth pastor. Uh, pastor Andrew has been with People's Church for three years. He interned for two years and has been on staff now as our youth pastor for the last year. Uh, he has a love for students, a love for people, a love for this house, but most importantly, a deep love for God. He's holy. He loves God. He's a man of integrity. Would you guys please give it up for our youth pastor? Come on, give it up for Pastor Andrew as he makes his way up. Come on, people, search. Keep those hands going for Jesus today. Amen. Hey, man, man, I can tell this is the 11 o'clock service. Come on, somebody. Hey, all seriousness, man, what an awesome honor and privilege it is to be the student pastor here at People's Church. For those of you who don't know my story, five years ago, uh, yeah, it was five years ago when I graduated high school, not that long ago, but uh, I, uh, I wanted nothing to do with youth ministry at all. I had a completely different plan and direction. I thought I was going to go with my life, and then God took me down a different path, and man, I, fe I fell in love with the next generation, and I haven't looked back ever since. I love it. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I'll be a youth pastor till I'm 90, till I'm, a, till I'm below the ground, if, the, if that's what the Lord calls me to do. But man, just it's awesome to be at a church so passionate about the next generation and just to serve under the leadership of Pastor Chris and Pastor Jamie. I'm just so thankful that um, they're, they're not only committed, but they're also convicted uh, to reaching the next generation of leaders and world changers. And so I believe uh, in obeying 100% of the Bible, especially when it says to give honor to whom honor is due. And so can we just put our hands together and make some noise? <laughs> Pastor Chris and Jamie Smith, man. Wonderful pastors, amazing leaders, and they're even better people. Jess and I, we love you so much and just grateful for you both and how you've invested in us. Well, today, like Pastor Chris said, it is Youth Takeover Sunday. I got to know, though, how many of you remember what it was like when you were a teenager, though? Like, come on, this, this is a diverse church. That's what I love about people's church. You know, our, our, our skin color, our ethnicity, and then like our backgrounds. But then it's like, we got different ages in the, in the room. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, if you're like me, like I'm 23, so you're like, oh, well, teen, being a teenager wasn't that long ago for you. True. If you're not like me, though, you're like, Pastor Andrew, why are you going to make me count <laughs> count so many years? Like, I, I don't even know. But you see, what's awesome is that uh, whenever I think about different demographics, different people groups and age groups, the word that comes to mind is actually generation. Uh, generation's a word that you'll see in the Bible. It's a word you may even hear, not be surprised if you hear it often. Uh, what I normally hear is, well, that was, that was that generation or your generation. And my generation, things were this way. And so really, uh, the, the easiest way to define a generation would be a, a period, if you will, in which which a, a particular group of people was born and alive during that specific time. And, you know, I kind of had a thought. I was like, man, you know, next week we're starting uh, the throwback series, which I'm really excited for, by the way. I hope you'll be here as we kick it off. But I thought about, man, what if we just threw it back a little bit today? Because I'm like, we have some different generations represented in the room. And I'm like, you I honestly, like, each generation is unique in its own way. They have different characteristics that set each other apart. I'm like, you really can't fully understand or grasp that, though, until you look back at the way, like, people used to dress, wear their hair, the slang, like, you know what I'm saying? In fact, like, um, my beautiful fiance, Jess, who is up here leading worship, we're getting married in August, y'all, 41 days from now. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm excited if you can't tell, but I was thinking like, man, you know, we're, we're over a month out. I'm like, I may need to change it up with my hair a little bit. And so I was, I felt inspired. Uh, I went to the great theologian, uh, known as Google. These are the jokes. They don't get any better. Um, so I went to Google and I was like, man, I got to see like what was like, what's a cut that, that, I could, that I could choose from that represented each generation. So what I need you all to do is help me today pick from a generation. Y'all shaking your heads no at me. You're supposed to shake your heads yes. Like, all right, preacher, I'm going to help you. All right. Man, let's look at who here, who here would say uh, you're from the baby boomer generation. Like, okay, I see, like, <laughs> I see, uh, I see, like, Gen Alpha raising their hands. I'm like, y'all don't even know what a baby boomer is. 
<laughs> That's awesome. You see, the baby boomer generation is often defined as people born from 1946 to 1964, which would have been during the post-World War II era, if you will. Some would refer to the baby boomer generation as the rock and roll generation, or I thought this was awesome, the first TV generation. All the baby boomers like, oh yeah, shaking your head at me. But I thought I thought a really neat hairstyle, like y'all tell me if this looked good on me or not. Uh, let, let's throw this first one up here from the baby boomer generation. King of rock and roll, look at that. The pompadour look like... Ba- where you at, babe? I think I pulled that off. She's shaking her head no. So, she, nope, she gave me a thumbs down. All right, we're moving, moving right along here. The next generation uh, would be Generation X, also known as Gen X. You see, this generation is generally defined as people born from 1965 to 1980. That's also when Sylvester Stallone gave us Rocky Balboa. Praise the Lord. Jess is always reminding me. She's like, babe, you know Rocky's just a fictional character, right? And I'm like, no, I'm like, but he's real. I'm like, I'm like, if I could be anybody, I'd want to be Rocky. Like, yo, Adrian. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I thank God for Generation X. Gave me my hero. You know what I'm saying? But I thought, I thought an, in, an interesting hairstyle. Uh, Let's put that one up on the screen for him. How many, how many of y'all know? <laughs> she didn't even say anything. She just gave me the look like, don't you dare. Come on, mustaches and mutton chops were in back then. You know what I'm saying? Or what about this one? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say that's the hippie generation, but that, that won't speak for everybody. What about this one? Do we have any millennials in the room? Like, okay, I, I hear you, I hear you. So, also known as Generation Y, Gen Y. Uh, this generation is typically defined as people born between 1981 and 1996. Uh, I always joke with my dad, I'm like, man, that's when basketball was good. That's when music was good. And I'm like, that's when Rocky IV came out, which is the best Rocky, if you know what I'm saying. Like, if you don't agree, we'll have an altar call at the end of service. It's all right. But I thought, I thought a really, really interesting hairstyle. I want to know how many of you used to rock the Michael Jackson perm. Like, y'all, if I could get hair like that, I'd stare at the man in the mirror too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, come on. Or what about this? Who, who here remembers the mullet? Now, I got an ew from like this side of the room over here. The mullet, the mustache. She's kind of like trying to do that Elvis in the front, but then like keep it long in the back. Like I just get that ducktail going if I don't keep it clean. So I don't know if I can grow a mullet or not. But you see, in all seriousness, like I wanted to have some fun with this today. But how many of you would know and agree that the God we serve is a generational God? Like the Bible says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a generational type of God. He is a generational God. And you see, here at People's Church, we not only believe that every generation, whether old or young, needs to know Jesus, we're also committed to seeing this next generation of world changers, of leaders, come to know who Jesus is. We believe in the youth, and that's why we have Youth Takeover Sunday. But who exactly is this current generation of teenagers. You see, this generation of teenagers is what most of us would know as Generation Z or Gen Z. Yeah, make some noise if you're Gen Z. Maybe you're like, I don't know if I'm in Gen Z. (laughs) Here you go. Some would even call you Zoomers. This generation is defined as people born from 1997 to 2012, which would currently be uh, eight, from ages 7 to 27. Some of you are all like, well, Pastor Andrew, throw up the Gen Z haircut. Y'all, we didn't make our own. We just copied and pasted yours. Like, <laughs> we were just like, hey, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you see, I want you today to, all jokes aside, just for a moment, I want you to lean in and listen to some statistics and some information, rather, that we know about Gen Z. Did you know that two out of three Zoomers are currently leaving the church or have already left the church? Gen Z is also twice as likely than any other generation to become, an, to become atheist. This blows my mind. Only 3% of Gen Z are reading the Bible. And then from experiencing an unprecedented global pandemic, this generation now spends at least four hours a day on their phones or devices, 
And as a result, many have labeled this generation of teenagers as screenagers. On a more serious note, however, the, the unregulated and unhealthy amount of a screen time, this exposure has most definitely played a significant role in the mental health crisis that many in this current generation are experiencing today. In fact, there was also a study conducted in 2019 where researchers asked a group of teenagers about some of their life experiences within the past 90 days. And here are some of the results gathered from the responses of the teenagers resolved in this particular study. The study revealed that 74% of teenagers said they experienced loneliness in the last 90 days. 66% said they experienced high anxiety in the last 90 days. 60% said they experienced depression in the last 90 days. Keep in mind, it's only the last 90 days, the past three, most recent three months, not over the course of their entire life. Keep in mind, the study was also conducted prior to the pandemic. I imagine what these numbers would look like post-pandemic in 2022 today. Uh, another study, or this study also revealed that 35% of teenagers in the United States reported suffering from suicidal thoughts and tendencies. It means there's more than one in three teenagers who said in the past 90 days they strongly thought about and considered ending their own life. Many people may say we have a problem or an obstacle in our way and ask, what are we going to do? How can we make a change? You see, I truly believe that there's not only an obstacle in front of us, but I believe today there's an opportunity we have as the church of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus, we have an opportunity in front of us to make a difference, to make an impact on this generation. What we must do is strengthen our commitment to the next generation. And what I mean by that is it's not just something we just talk about. It's something we have to be all about. We have to put into action the change we want to see in Gen Z. And it's our commitment that comes from our conviction. And that's why at People's Church, we believe that Gen Z will be set free. You see, where, where is it do we find and experience freedom? You know, when we look at Scripture and we look at past experiences, we know that true freedom is ultimately found only in the presence of God. And that's why we have Epic Youth every single Wednesday night here at People's Church. It's why we do events like March Madness in the spring, Back to School Bash in the fall. It's why we have an epic summer camp every single summer because we believe in the value, the impact that giving students space to encounter the presence of Jesus. We believe in what it will accomplish we believe Gen Z will be set free. Look at what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Corinth, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. It says, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I, I can admit today that the world does a way better job at throwing a party than the church does. But can I tell you as the church, we have something to offer this generation of students that the world does not, that culture does not, that society does not. And that is the presence of Jesus. We have something that has changed lives for thousands and thousands of years. And now is not the time to keep quiet, to hold it in to ourselves, but to pass it on to generation after generation so that Gen Z will be set free. We want you to know that our youth ministry here at People's Church, it's not about a party. It's about the presence of Jesus. It's not about free pizza every time there's a big event. It's about the presence of Jesus. It's not about a promo video. It's not about popularity. It's all about the presence of Jesus. That's what People's Church is all about, regardless of the generation. It's any and every generation. It's all about the presence of God. And for the next few moments today, I want to share with you exactly why we're committed and convicted to creating moments for our students to experience the presence of Jesus. And so if you're taking notes today, the title of the message is simply this, the power of a moment, the power of a moment. Whether it's a, it's a moment you'd like to remember forever or one that you're like, man, I wish I could forget that one. We'd all agree 
Moments are powerful in general, just in and of themselves. They carry great power with them. When I think about moments in my life, there was a moment last year, if, you, if you've heard me preach before or you know me well, I'm a diehard Colts fan. And so there was a game last year that took place on a Saturday night I was able to go to, and uh, I, I t- ended up taking my, my youngest sister with me. But y'all, this wasn't just any Colts game. Like, we've got these rivals on the East Coast. I'm like trying not to say their names, but for those of you who don't know, I'll just say it once and get it out of the way. The New England Patriots. Um, so they came into town. We hadn't played them in a few years. We hadn't beaten them. And I, it was like, I couldn't even remember how many. It was like 13, 14 years. I was like, man, I was trying to remember how old I was the last time we'd beaten our rivals. And so we were on a roll. They were coming into our turf. And I'm like, this is going to be a good game. And my sister's like, I'm a Chiefs fan. I like Patrick Mahomes, but I'll go to the game with you. I'm like, you're not going to be a Chiefs fan after this game. Trust me. So we ended up going in this game. And y'all talk about a football game. Like three quarters. We shut them out. We were dominating. I was like, let's go we're finally gonna beat them and then like the Colts just have this tendency when like the fourth quarter rolls around like to forget like oh we still have 15 more minutes to play so the Patriots just started dominating the fourth quarter and I'm like man if we don't score here it's over we're gonna give give them the ball back it's gonna be over and so our, our former quarterback who I probably shouldn't name because I'll get booed off the stage but Carson Wentz snaps the ball and he turns around he gives it to Jonathan Taylor and I'm like oh man what's gonna happen and I see this like incredible block and there's this big massive hole at the line of scrimmage and I'm like Oh Lord, if he runs through that hole, I'm like, this ball game, sure enough, he turns on the Jets, he takes off running. Every, but there was nobody sitting down in that stadium, y'all. Everybody's screaming, run, run, run. He outruns one defender, two defender, three defender. Before you know it, he's walking in the end zone. And I just like turn around at my sister and I go, ball game. Like, it's over. Everybody's chanting, MVP, MVP. She goes, I'm not a Chiefs fan anymore. I was like, yeah, you're not a Chiefs fan anymore. She starts seeing, like, Colts and Patriots fans getting into fights, and I'm like, man, what a moment. Like, beating your rival on your home turf after all these years. I'm like, that's incredible. Man, what a moment I'll I'll never forget. Or there was also a moment in my life that was more near and dear to my heart a year ago in July when I asked the most beautiful human ever uh, to become my wife. We went to St. George, Utah. Y'all, I flew her all the way out to Utah, tried to con- talk her into marrying me. It worked. She said yes. We got a picture up on that mountain. Man, a moment I'll never forget. Like, I had it all scripted, everything I was going to say, and then it's like in a moment, you're like, Oh, man, I should have brought sermon notes just to ask her to marry me because I can't remember any of it. So, man, you just pull the ring out of pocket, getting down on one knee. Man, what an emotional, powerful moment we'll hold on to forever. Man, when we're about, when we get married here in 41 days, man, what a moment that's going to be. Think about the moments in your life when, when you said yes to your person, when you got married, or whenever you had your children. Think about the moment you gave your life to Jesus. We all have moments that carry power and significance to us in some way. You see, we want our students to not just have moments. We want them to have moments with Jesus because we know it can change everything. It's in his presence where we receive his promises. We believe that the presence of Jesus changes everything. Let's look at a passage where God's promises are found in his presence. Uh, It's found in Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse number 1. The Bible says, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. You see, why are moments in the presence of God, why are moments with Jesus so meaningful? Why are they so important? Why do they matter? It's because a moment with Jesus serves like a key, a custom cut key to a specific lock. It's that moment with Jesus that will unlock the door for you to experience more 
of God's presence in your life. You see, how many of you would agree you need more joy, you need more peace, you need more rest, you need more comfort? Everything that we need is ultimately found in the presence of Jesus. And so today, I wanna talk to you today about the power of a moment. And the first thing I want us to realize is this, number one, moments will unlock more. You see, at this point in your life, this, will, this may be new to some of you, or this may be just an awesome reminder for you today that I hope blesses you. No matter what you have seen or experienced up to this point in your life or in your relationship with Jesus, there is still more that God has in store for you. Whether you're a baby boomer, whether you're Gen X, whether you're Gen Z, no matter what generation you come from or you claim, God has more for your life in this moment than what you have already experienced up to this this point. You see, in the Bible, Jesus is actually talking to his disciples about experiencing more. It was before this moment in Acts 2, Jesus began to take time to prepare his disciples to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus told them, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What's awesome is that Jesus' disciples, remember up to this point, they've seen him open blind eyes. They've seen him open deaf ears. People who couldn't walk or walking, running, jumping, doing all these things. They've seen dead people come to life. And now Jesus is in a position where he's about to end his earthly ministry. And he tells them, you haven't seen anything yet. There's still so much more that I'm preparing you for to experience in your life. Jesus even said in John chapter 14 that there are greater things we would do in our time on this earth than he did in his earthly ministry. But how is that even possible? Because we believe that when we receive more from Jesus, we can do more for Jesus. And Peter's an example for us to look at because before the power of the Holy Spirit came into his life before he unlocked more y'all he couldn't he denied he knew Jesus in front of a little girl like and then he has a moment with Jesus that unlocks everything and the Bible says he's filled with boldness he's filled with power to preach the gospel on the day of Pentecost and to be an early leader or to be a leader in the early church he was more confident in his boldness and in his witness and you see we believe that Jesus is wanting to do more in this generation and that's why we're believing for more because we serve a God who can do more the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it says this now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And when we get this, it truly changes everything. When we understand that in every season, in every situation, every circumstance, God is able and that there is power that didn't come from ourselves, but power that comes from God, power that comes from having a relationship with Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a power working in us to help me love people who are difficult to love, to help me set a good influence on those around me, to help me resist temptation that comes into my life. There is a power I have access to greater than what I can accomplish on my own. There's more and it all comes from being with Jesus. You see, Paul continued in his letter to the church of Ephesus in chapter four. He's talking about unity in the body of Christ. Listen to what he said in verse 14. He said, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown away by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever. They sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Here at People's Church, we want you to know that we will do everything short of sin to ensure that our students will not be immature like children to ensure that our students will not be tossed around by the teachings, the ideologies, the philosophies of this world and our culture, that our students will not be influenced by others, but instead our, we will raise up a generation that will speak the truth in love and that will grow to become more and more like Jesus. And how is that possible? It comes from spending time with Jesus. It comes from having a moment with Jesus because a moment with Jesus changes everything. The truth is that Jesus wants to do more. 
And that alone is why we can't afford to be satisfied or complacent with where we are in our lives and in our faith journey. God wants to do more in PC Kids. God wants to do more in Epic Youth. He wants to do more in our young adults here at People's Church. God wants to do more in you. He wants to do more through you. We want our kids and youth to have a moment with Jesus because a moment with Jesus will unlock more. I know here on the front row, I've got uh, Pastor Chris and Jamie's son, Jace. I'm like, not gonna try to embarrass you, bro. But there was a time when we started our youth ministry where Jace was just coming uh, to Wednesday nights by himself. And then before I knew it, Jace started bringing a friend of his from uh, Mount Vernon named Liam. And so Liam comes and he gets to see what Epic is all about. And Liam's like, man, this is pretty cool. Like, all right, I could be a part of this. Like there was even a moment in one of our small groups one night where Liam was just able to connect with everybody in the group and share about his life. And he's like, man, I never had a moment like that before. Like that was different. I really like that. I, I feel like family, like I belong here. And I'm like, man, this is cool. Like Jay starts bringing Liam awesome. And then they like double team and they're like, man, we got to get Tony to come to Epic. Tony right here in the front row. They're like, man, we got to get Tony to come to Epic now. And so then Tony starts coming. And so like Tony begins to experience what Epic is about. It's like, all right, this is cool. Like I'll, I'll go to Epic every Wednesday night with Jace and with Liam. And then before I know it, I'm like, man, there was one. Now there's three. This is pretty cool. I like what I'm seeing. And then before I know it, the three of them get together they're like all right we can't do this without mason so now we got to get mason coming and i'm like then all four of them walk in and i'm like hold on a second i'm like this is pretty cool y'all they go they go to summer camp man it was awesome to get to see jace's friends give their life to jesus at epic some of them even gave their life to jesus at summer camp two weeks ago they've joined our epic summer internship team on wednesday nights they're leading the way in the altar i'm like man it's moments like that that create movements because jace had a moment with Jesus that led to a, mo to a movement where, do you see, like, our God's a God of movement when we see that in Scripture. He never stays stuck or stands still. He's a God of movement, and you get to see the movement in that story where it wasn't just Jason anymore. Jace had a moment with Jesus, and it moved to Jason, Liam having a moment with Jesus, and then Tony, and then Mason, and can I tell you, that's what youth ministry is all about. It's not about a 60-second highlight reel. It's about of movement. A move, we believe that not only there's power in a moment, but we also believe that moments will unlock a movement. Moments will unlock a movement. It says in the book of Acts in chapter 2 verse 41 that those who believed on what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, they were baptized and it says they added to the church that day about 3,000 people in all. You talk about a church service when 3,000 people come to know Jesus. That's incredible. That's a movement. And it says in verse 47, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Day after day, there were moments leading to a movement. A movement, that's how powerful a moment in a movement is, is that something that started in the early church is something we're still living in today as the church of Jesus Christ. There's power in movements. Church, you see, we are praying and believing for a movement in our students. You know, I, I shared those stats with you earlier today, and when I look at the future, man, there's so much I don't know. Like, who, who here was able to predict that we'd have a global pandemic in 2020? If you knew, why didn't you tell the rest of us? Like, you know what I'm saying? There's, but there's so much I don't know. But here's what I do know. I know that God is still faithful. God is faithful. He was faithful to my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my parents. He's been faithful to my generation, and I know he'll be faithful in generations long after me that outlive me. I know Jesus still saves, heals, and delivers. I know that the Holy Spirit still empowers people. I know through Jesus, the church is still the hope of the world. I know that this generation has been destined by God for greatness. I know that our mission at People's Church is still more changed lives. It was 20 years ago. It is today. And 20 years from now, generations from now, it will still always be about more changed lives. I shared this with all of our youth leaders at the beginning of the year, but I, I did this study where I took, within 10 to 15 minutes of our location here at People's Church, I took every high school, every middle school within 10 to 15 minutes uh, of where we are. And I got the enrollment of each school, did the math and thought like, man, how many students are in our backyard? Like how many students could we reach? And the total number I ended up with was 64,000. 
I was like, wow. I was like, that's incredible. Like, how, how can I put that in perspective today? And so here's what I want to show you. Here's a picture of Raymond James Stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play their home games. The max capacity of that NFL stadium is, guess what? Exactly. 64,000 students. And there may be some of you who are like, now, Pastor Andrew, like some of those come from godly homes. They're, they go to a good church. They're involved in a youth group. Man, I, I praise God for every single student that that's their testimony. But I guarantee you the majority of that 64,000, broken home, depressed, anxious, lost, doesn't know who Jesus is, doesn't have a community, doesn't have a good support system. Think about that, 64,000 people. That is our ceiling, what we're capable of reaching. These 64,000 students, though, can I tell you, they don't just need another youth ministry to attend on Wednesday night, but what this city needs is a movement, uh, something to be a part of, to call home, to call family, where there's moments with Jesus and where there's movements where we're sharing Jesus. I don't know a lot but I do know this, here at People's Church, we will raise up a youth movement that will change the world because moments start movements and we see it all throughout the book of Acts. At People's Church, I see a youth movement where students will experience the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a youth movement that is diverse and for everyone. One of my favorite verses in Acts 2.17, it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. It means Jews and Gentiles, red, black, white, yellow, brown, men, women, young, old, rich, poor. I see a youth movement where scripture engagement is a priority. In Acts 2.42, it says that all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching of the word of God. I see a youth movement that will make every effort to help students know God, grow in God, discover their purpose, and make a difference. In 2 Peter 1, 12 through 13, it says, I will always remind you of those things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. He says, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. See, church family, Gen Z will be set free. But to see it happen, it's gonna start with you and it's gonna start with me. You know, my prayer as a youth pastor is not that students who grow up and graduate from our youth ministry will remember every single sermon I preached, will remember all the fun games we played. My number one prayer is that when they graduate and move on into life, they'll reflect on the moments they had with each other, the moments they had with Jesus that led to the movement they were a part of, something they experienced so real they can take with them from generations to come. You see today, no matter what generation you would claim, we all have a part in seeing Gen Z be set free. It may look different for all of us, but no matter where you are today, what you feel called to, I'd like to ask you to do three things. One, would you pray for this generation? Would you spend time praying, interceding for them? The pressures they face are real. Their struggles, their issues are real. They need to know that there's people in their corner cheering them on, praying for them, believing in them. Number two, would you prioritize the church with your children, with your grandchildren, and with your students? Success starts on Sundays. With youth ministry, we could say it starts on Wednesdays too. But I'm thankful today, all these students you see serving, most of them, they serve every single Sunday. They're a part of God's house. They're connected. Man, make God's house a priority for your students. They'll never be the same. You won't regret it. And lastly, number three, would you participate in reaching the next generation? You know, we all have a role to play. I'm thankful for every youth leader we have on our team. And maybe you're here and you're like, well, Pastor Andrew, I'm definitely not called to be a youth leader. Maybe, but you are called to serve. And today I just wanna take a moment from my heart to challenge and encourage those of you 
If you haven't completed growth track or maybe you completed growth track, but you would say, I'm not on a dream team or I, I don't serve consistently on Sundays. Man, when we talk about God has more for your life than what you've experienced, man, that's what that looks like for you, being a part of a community and a team, making a difference in God's house every weekend. So if that's you today and you know your next step to experiencing more of Jesus is to get involved with Growth Tracker, to get on a dream team, would you text PCGT to 94000? And when you do that, you'll get a link. Just click on the link and fill out the form and we'll get you registered. You can even let us know as you fill that out, you can let us know, hey, I've already completed growth track. I don't need to go through it again. I just need to get on a team. And man, we're, we're excited to help you get connected, to take your next step moving forward. People's church moments have power. Moments create movements. Moments with Jesus change everything. And the most important thing I can do today is give you all an opportunity to have a moment with Jesus.